Our next project is a Roco BR-10 002 Dynamic Smoke Steam Loco. There's a box. There's a Loco. The fan for the, the Dynamic Smoke fan has stopped working, so I'm going to take this Loco apart. And it is a really, really complex Loco. I've had it apart before in the past. Completely stripped it down and rebuilt it. But just for I didn't show how to do it last time, but I think I'm going to show how to do it. This is a box. The box is amazing. That comes with it. You get like, you get like a tons of documentation with it, and you get like a, a display case with the track. You even get a track, like molded track in there. It's brilliant. So yeah, let's have a look at this. So there's no documentation. To tell you how to take the boiler off to get inside the boiler to the fan and all the rest of the infrastructure inside the boiler i just cannot remember how i did it last time i wish i did a video on it, it tells you how to get the, the tender apart to get to the uh, decoder etc but not the dynamic smoke chamber and the fan system and all the pipe work and i know it's really tricky but i think it's uh I'm pretty sure you got to take these two screws out here and here and the body does disengage from the top the whole lot comes off and I know it's really tricky there's another yeah got another couple of screws hiding away somewhere I'll have to have a look first of all I'm going to take off the uh, tender the top part to get access to the boiler to disconnect the logo from the main boiler so that's what I'm going to do first and uh, that's it it just pops off that like, very easily and you get access to the uh, Zemo chip and uh, capacitor there all the details I'm not sure what that red thing is you can disconnect the uh, loco from the attendant now by unplugging that. You just um, <clears throat> unplug that out the socket and then you just pull the loco boiler from the tender and that's it. I can go investigate more now. The next step is to take so screw inside there where the uh, the fluid chamber is for the dynamic smoke um, effects, and you take one screw out, and the whole bot the whole pop top part of the body just lifts off. So I'm just going to take that off. I'm just going to be a bit careful though. I'm not sure exactly what's going to snag. So. Uh, Pull the body off carefully. You just got to manipulate the wires out from the cab, through the cab exit where it goes to the tender, and then you got to disconnect the ribbon cable from the PCB for the cab light, and then you get access uh, to the rest of the dynamic smoke. You got dynamic smoke chamber, and then there's some pipe work, and then there's a motor there, and you got the um, smoke generator here. So this is all caked up. It's, I think the reason it's not working is because the fan's all caked up with oil or the motor. You can see the motor connections are not not working right because it's over spilt. All these tidy up, it's all got a residue all over it so it needs a bit, a bit of a maintenance this. So I'm gonna, there's a little cap, it just pulls off, spring-loaded plastic cap, that gets you access to the motor, but, and that motor just pulls out, well, I'm going to have to disassemble the rest of the assembly first. The other cowling off, two screws on the uh, front cowling, and that gives you, uh, you can, that, you can see the fan there for the the dynamic smoke. Sorry, got that in focus, and you can lift out the motor now. Pretty sure that just lifts out. 
Not 100% sure, I'll just have to investigate a bit further here. There's a long screw there. Take that out. Take two uh, screws off the cowling on the, on the front. Those two screws. And then there's a little metal alloy section which pulls off there. And then you just lift. The whole lot will just lift off. Like that. And you can see the whole unit including the smoke generator and then you've got the contacts for the smoke generator and the contacts for the motor there it's getting a bit messy this I remember this last time now when I did it it's covered stages to take the four screws off the smoke chamber fluid chamber that connects to the alloy chassis and you can see a rubber pipe running along there to the smoke generator so uh, I'm just going to take it apart and clean it, completely strip the whole thing down. So let's have a go. This is getting pretty messy now. So anyway, I've unscrewed the uh, fluid chamber and there's a gasket. Inside the chamber it's not too bad, it's fine. It's plastic. I'm going to clean it out and then there's a pipe that runs along to the smoke generator. But I'm not going to disconnect that because it looks like it's really uh, on really tight and I don't want to disrupt that pipe really. Could have done with cleaning it out but it means risk breaking it. I've not got any of that rubber tubing. So I'm just going to run some air down that. So I'll clean up the gasket, clean up the screws take the motor out now and clean the contacts I completely taking the uh, chassis apart all that needs cleaning up the motor and if it still works I'm going to test it all the contacts need cleaning the fan looks all right the fan looks okay but I can put some voltage through that and test it <clears throat> and then clean up this pipe work and the rest of this uh, reservoir etc. Right this is day two. Uh, I've reorganised the bench and made it more tiny because when I started to do this model I was just sort of having a browse around it to see just to see how I could open the body up and one thing led to another and I ended up completely stripping it apart. But now I've got the uh, table set up properly, the space, everything's all broken down, everything's cleaned up and on this model uh, the important thing to do when you strip it down is clean all the alloy residue, if you've got any alloy residue on here, which I added, I had some corrosion from the alloy embedded in the plastic, so I had to clean that off, clean all the, the lower boiler section off, clean the contacts carefully if you can if there's any debris on that and check the bottom contact as well there's a contact on the bottom it's got to make sure that's nice it's a really nice model to work on because it all strips down really nice and these wheels these are free moving because it's tender drive and it's just a pleasure to look at and I've had this model completely apart even all the wheel arrangement I've, I've had the whole wheel sections out, all the contacts out, and that was that took me ages to put it back. And these fairings can come off as well on the front if you've got it in uh, display mode, or if you've got really shallow curves, you can run the prototypical cowlings on the front, or you can take them off completely if you've got tight curves. It's really 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 nice model it all comes apart beautifully so I took out I took all the parts I've cleaned all the alloy up best I can I've used a brush I've used a special brush with brass inserts and synthetic out, out surrounding bristles uh, to clean up the alloy I've used a toothbrush an old toothbrush I've used some scotch bright and some fine emery paper and just very carefully cleaned up the motor. The motor's still working fine. Spins beautifully. 
cleaned up my gasket, um, the reservoir, reservoir, or whatever you want to, I, I always say it a strange way, with me being Mancunian. Um, clean up the contacts on the smoke um, sleeve, make sure that that's slightly bent that. That little, um, there's a little indent, there's a little sort of like wire coming out of a metal on the end. As long as that's all right, it's a bit spent slightly, it doesn't really make any difference. I'm going to try and put this back together again now. So, and I've been using also uh, contact cleaner WD 40 with a fine nozzle. Been using some of that, I've been using a bit of trap magic. I know this can affect certain plastics soft plastics but if it's uh, high quality plastics shouldn't be affected i've never had any problems using this stuff i know a few people have so you've got to be careful with using that on certain models and track work but i personally never had any problems we've got the boiler section which you could do with cleaning up if you take this off that's really highly detailed it's got lots of really nice pipe work on it it's really it's amazing how they made this model for the money really because I paid 480 quid for it and I think it's worth every penny it is a truly amazing model the technology packed inside it is unbelievable because you've got a full digital sound you've got cab lighting you've got the wheel arrangement lighting on both sides you've got all the beautiful running gear and all the detail on that is absolutely stunning it really is then you've got the tender. This is where, oh, I mean, that is so heavy. It's, you, it's unbelievable, the weight in that. It's all metal construction. You've got the Zemo chip there. And you've got the uh, capacitor backup for dirty track. You've got the sound chamber, which is unbelievable sound on this. But only four-wheel drive on this tender, I think. Hang on. One. Is it two? I can't. No, no, it's two wheels at that end. And two wheels at this end. One traction tyre. Sorry, two traction tyres at this end. No traction tyres at the other end. And then these centre ones are free moving. It's a strange, really strange drive system, but it works. It works really well. I can attempt to try and put this back now. Right, I'm going to put this back together again now, so that's the back end towards the cab, that's the front end, and it's important you don't over tighten the screws going into the alloy, you don't want that alloy threading, it would be virtually impossible to re-thread it. Yeah, so when you come to put it back in, you've just got to be careful to manip manipulate the front section through that plastic peg there. The peg there and that just pushes through and then there's a cap, an alloy cap that secures that part in place which you've got push in place. Two screws there, one there and one there to put back in and then one screw here at the back and it's a floating, it's like a floating, you can see it's, a, it's slightly lifted off the PCB for obvious reasons. So I'm just going to put that back together now. The alloy section there is just a cap that pushes on. I'm not exactly, I think it's like a diffuser thing. I'm not sure exactly what that's for. Um, but anyway, next is the motor. You know, you just got to be careful as well. You see positive and negative on the top of the uh, chassis there. You've got to line up the motor. The motor's got a positive sign. We'll line up the positive with the positive side of the turnable on the uh, when you're inserting the motor. It's essential that you put the uh, rubber pad 
so the short the motor does not short out on the chassis because uh, you've got negative positive coming up through there then put the rubber pad in and then the motor the pins coming up through the chassis that connect to the motor have got them on the outside face of the motor pins Well, I've had to clean these contacts really delicately and well on the motor when it comes up through there but it's took me a while to get it to work but it seems to be working all right That seems to be working all right now. I've cleaned, I took the motor out a few times and put contact cleaner on it and flooded it in contact cleaner because it wasn't quite starting up properly. It needed a little bit of a push, but anyway, it seems to be all right now. I'm just going to carry on doing tests before I put that, screw that back on and before I put the body on. The body's made of plastic, by the way, but it's really high quality. That's just one screw holding the body on, which is good. I might put some uh, cab drivers in while I'm uh, got it apart, so that's one thing I probably will do. Right, cab crew are in. Prize here. Took the cab apart and I'm going to paint the dials on the cab. Might not be much point of it, but I thought while I got it apart, I might as well do it. 